Hello, so we have already discussed <coughs> two sections of 25.1 and 2 of astronomy and cosmology, the new inclusion to A level physics 9702. So, the third section is regarding the Hubble's law and the Big Bang theory. We are going to discuss four learning outcomes. The first one says that understand that the lines in the emission spectra from the distant objects show an increase in wavelengths from their known values. The second one talks about an equation for redshift of electromagnetic radiations from a source moving relative to an observer. And the third one is regarding the redshift leads to an idea of the universe is expanding. And the third, fourth one is regarding Hubble's law. So let's start. So let's start with Hubble's law. The statement says that the recession speed V of a galaxy is directly proportional to its distance d from us. Let's see a diagram. Let's suppose that we have Earth and a galaxy. The galaxy is always moving away from the Earth. And the speed with which it is moving away is v and the distance between the center of galaxy and the center of Earth is d. So the mathematical form for Hubble's law is V is directly proportional to D. So when you remove the proportionality sign, we get V equals Hubble's constant multiplied by D. Where Hubble's constant is equal to 2.4 into 10 raised to the power negative 8. Let's move on to Doppler redshift. Let's see the formula. This is change in lambda over lambda equals change in frequency over frequency equals the recession speed of galaxy divided by the speed of light in vacuum. Let's see the conditions. Doppler redshift applies for galaxies which are moving with non relativistic motion. That means that the speed of galaxy the speed of galaxy recession speed is much less than the speed of light. We have already studied Doppler effect. Let's suppose we have Earth and the galaxy which is moving away. If the galaxy is moving away, that means that the wavelengths have increased. If an object moves towards the wavelength decrease, so it is moving away, so the wavelength has increased. So basically, the change in lambda because of the galaxies moving away from the Earth leads to a change in frequency, which as a result leads to the velocity and the speed of light, which is this V is the velocity or the recession speed with which the galaxy is moving. Now, if we say that we have a redshift of 7%, that means that 0 0.07 is equal to change in lambda over lambda equals to change in frequency over frequency is equal to the recession speed divided by the speed of light. So if we are given with the redshift, what we can do is find the recession speed. Recession speed V, because the speed of light is 3 into 10 the power of Let's move on to the evidence for Big Bang. Now, the space is stretching as the time is passing by. Let's see a graph. As the time is passing by, the space is, our space is stretching. So if we have, for example, at instant, at some instant of time, if we have three planets, like one, two, and three, after a certain period of time, they would be over here. So that means that the gap have increased. That means that the lambda have increased. That means that the red shift, Doppler red shift have applied. So that also means that the speed, recession speed have increased. 
so going further the distance further increases so that is the evidence for the big bang theory and that refers to the redshift doppler's redshift let's see some question uh, from the specimen paper of 2022 now the question says that a star has a luminosity that is known to be 4.8 into 10 raised to the power 29 watts so that's our l a scientist observed that this star finds that the radiant flux intensity of the light received on earth from the star is 2.6 nano watt per meter square so that is our radiant flux intensity which is our f name the term used name the term used to describe an astronomical object that has known luminosity so we have already studied that is standard candle part 2 says that determine the distance of the star from the earth so what we can do is apply the formula f is equals to l over 4 pi d square and make d the subject and just plug in the values of luminosity and the intensity so calculating this our distance becomes 3.8 into 10 raised to the power 18 meters part b says that the sun has a surface temperature of 5800 kelvin so we have value of t The wavelength max of the light for which the maximum rate of emission occurs from the sun is 500 nanometers. So we have lambda 1. The scientist observing the star in a finds that the wavelength for which the maximum rate of emission occurs for the star is 430 nanometers. So that's our lambda 2. Show that the surface temperature of the star in is approximately 6700 Kelvin. Explain your reasoning. So we can say that the Wien's displacement law states that the lambda max is inversely proportional to the surface temperature and then we can make up an equation lambda 1 t1 equals lambda 2 t2. We need to find t2 and make t2 the subject. Now just plug in the values. So evaluating this, put these values in the calculator, we will get the answer 67. So the second part says that use the information in A and B1 to determine the radius of the star. So let's use the formula L equals 4 pi sigma r squared t raised to the power 4. Make r the subject of the formula. We have the value for luminosity and we have also found the temperature for the star. So just plug in the values. Do bear in mind that the value for sigma is 5.67 into 10 to the negative 8 that will be given in the exam paper. So evaluating this, we will get the answer 1.8 into 10 raised to the power 10 meters. 1.8 into 10 raised to the power 10 meters. So that was a total of 7 mark question for this section. That's it for this video. Do subscribe and like my channel so that you can get benefit from all of my videos and content and do share it with your friends. Thank you.